All right, so we'll go ahead and get started today. Good morning to all of you. Thanks for uh, joining me yet again. Um, today, we're going to talk a little bit more about AutoCAD, but really today is about the post-processing that's involved with AutoCAD. So we're going to take AutoCAD, the drawing that we worked on last class, from Paperspace, make a PDF, and then bring it into um, primarily Adobe Illustrator and do some post-processing on it do some tweaking, change it a little bit, and I'll show you that process. Um, the other thing that I'll show you as part of a workflow is potentially bringing it into InDesign, uh, both of which are viable options coming out of AutoCAD. And they kind of have different purposes depending on how you've set up your, your drawings in the first place and what you're trying to get done in AutoCAD versus what you're trying to get done um, after the fact. So let me share my screen here. And then give me a second to get organized. Let me bring up the, uh, the chat window in case you guys have questions. All right. So I have brought up what, um, what I had last time, and that is my paper space drawing that has my plan view and my four elevation views. And so with that, um, again, I can go back, I can make my corrections, I can, I can double check line weights, etc. But these are where I'm kind of getting started today. So the presumption is that you've finished your floor plan and you've finished your four elevation views. Ideally, those are completely done and all errors are fixed. I can already tell that I have one error right here inside this viewport. So I'm going to double click and fix this one line that's not the correct line type. So let me come up here and change. I, I did the topography lines in phantom lines, which have the little dashes in them. Uh, that was more of a style thing than anything else. So since I was there, I figured I might as well fix that uh, as a problem. The rest of these are, are looking okay. I did not finish all of the shadows in this building. Uh, so let's go ahead and delete this shadow just so that I'm consistent and don't have any of the shadows here. Oops, sorry, that was Rhino. Rhino command sneaking in there. Let's erase that. And let me select this piece and let's erase that one. Perfect. So I've gotten this to the best of my abilities done. And it's now time to export it as a PDF. And to do that, we're gonna actually print to PDF. So I'll use the plot icon, which is up here in the upper left corner. And when I click on plot, I'm going to choose continue to plot a shingle sheet. And since we're here, I might as well talk about what this batch plot means. Uh, essentially, in AutoCAD, we could have a full sheet of uh, sheet set of drawings. So we might have, uh, you know, ten different layouts, twenty different layouts, thirty different layouts um, that are a bunch of different drawings that all relate to the same project. And sometimes when you have that multiple page set of drawings, we might wanna take all of them and print them all at once. Um, for our purposes right now, we're only plotting a single sheet and we're gonna to choose to only plot a single sheet. Truth be told, when I'm working in AutoCAD doing a, a more complicated drawing, frequently uh, I'll still plot single sheets because I don't wanna reprint all of them. I just wanna reprint the one that I'm working on. So we're gonna leave it as the AutoCAD PDF, high quality print. That's how we had it set up in our layout. Uh, the rest of these options are fine. Remember, our plot scale needs to be one-to-one -one because we're printing exactly what we're seeing on the page. And my plot style uh, or pen assignments need to be set to the uh, auto ACAD.ctb file. My quality is good. All the rest of this is okay. We'll go ahead and say okay. And now I need to choose where to save it. So let's put it into uh, today's folder. If I can find it, there we go. Let's create a new folder for spring of 2022. All right, and we're gonna go ahead and drop this one into that folder. So I'll go ahead and click on save. And so that's building the PDF for me. And we can see a preview of it here. It looks pretty good. So that opens the, uh, the PDF in just kind of a preview app. Um, uh, let's see, no thanks. But we want to take a more careful look at it. And so here's where we kind of have a divergent set of strategies. And what those strategies are is that we can take this first into Illustrator and do collage work in Illustrator. I'm going to show you that. 
Or we could take this drawing directly into, say, InDesign and create kind of a final sheet in InDesign. They have kind of two different purposes. If the drawing is good enough and we don't plan on making significant changes to it, going into um, InDesign to add some text or a title block or whatever is a good strategy. If we intend um, to, like, if we want to go back and make major design decision changes and whatever, then definitely moving it in InDesign makes sense because we can replace the PDF behind. And so I'll show you that workflow in just a second. The other option, though, tends to happen more when you're doing like a presentation drawing. And that's where you've finished AutoCAD to the point that, you know what, it's good enough. And now I'm going to take it into Illustrator and make it look even better. And you use Illustrator as a way of kind of fine tuning the drawing, maybe collaging the drawing, adding some color and texture and whatever. The key here is that you're not going to go back to the AutoCAD and make changes. And that's an important distinction. If you're going back to AutoCAD here, then you want to make sure that you're just working um, down the road in, say, something like InDesign, because you want to be able to replace the AutoCAD file. So let's work on that one first. So I'm going to minimize AutoCAD for a second, and I'm going to go ahead and open up InDesign. And I should probably mention that this is a departure from previous lectures. In previous lectures, I never really talked about InDesign in this lecture, uh, but I think it's really important, so I wanted to make sure I included it today. All right, so we can go ahead and close this little splash screen here. And we're going to be creating a new size page. So I'm going to go into the more presets. And then we're going to actually override everything. So I'm going to change the units into inches. And then I'm going to go a width of 36. If it takes my width here, come on. Oh, come on. Why? It was nothing typing from my keyboard. There we go. So height of 24, width of 36. Uh, it's going to be in landscape orientation. We don't want it to be facing pages, so I'll uncheck that. The margin set at a half inch around, that's fine. Actually, we could probably change that to a quarter inch round. And we'll go ahead and click on create. And that gives me this uh, 24 by 36 sheet. From here, I can go into file and then place. And we'll go into my folder for today. Oops, wrong class, sorry. And there's my PDF. We'll go ahead and drop this in. So I'll click in this upper corner and I'll drop that right there. Uh, looks like it didn't print the whole, the whole page. So I actually need to kind of rearrange this here. I don't want to change the scale of it, but let's make sure it's centered. There it is. I can also right click and say fitting. It's uh, fit frame to content. Let's see if there's anything more. No, that's all it included. It just included the extents of the print. So there it is. Now, don't worry that it's kind of blurry. Remember, I can always right click on the image and I can go to display performance and switch to high quality display. And that'll sharpen up to look really nice, which is our goal. And we can actually see the line weights much better in this view than we could before. Right, so here it is. Now I could bring in, say, a title block. I could add text to this. Etc. The advantage here is that if I went back to AutoCAD and I discovered that, you know what, my, my wall thickness isn't enough, right? When I go back into AutoCAD and I say, let's go into my layer properties, let's go to a wall. That looks like on this one, I just called it wall right there. And let's say, oh, it's at 0.4. Let's bump that up to 0.53. We'll say, okay. I'll save it and then we'll print it. 
Come on. There it is. Continue to plot a single sheet. All these options are just fine. Yes, we're going to replace it. Now watch. When I jump over into InDesign again, it gets blurry. And if I look in the upper left corner, see that little triangle that showed up right there? That little triangle is representative of the link has been modified. So if I went to my links window, you don't have to go to the links window. You can actually just click that triangle. But over here, we can see that, oh, it's been improved. Let me go ahead and refresh or update the link. And now I get the new version with the darker lines. So this is a, a really good way of setting up a drawing if you know you're going to be going back and making changes on it. But it's not particularly good if we're actually going to be doing collage work. Let's say we wanted to fill in the walls or something in Illustrator. We want to do some collage work of the windows. That's something that belongs in Illustrator as an app. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump over into Illustrator and show you that. So let me go ahead and open up Illustrator. And we'll give that a second to open up here. There we go. That took a little while. And this time, we don't need to create a new drawing. We can actually just go ahead and open the PDF. I'll go to File and then Open. And we can open that PDF directly. So let me go to my live demonstrations here again. There it is. We'll go ahead and just open it. And that's one of the neat things about Illustrator is that we can directly open a PDF file. And there it is, right? So this PDF file directly opens. And the, the key here is that we can actually modify this. We can make changes to it. And so when we go in to make changes, let's say, for example, I wanted the ground to be thicker, right? I can double click to get inside. Uh, this is called object isolation or group isolation. I'm inside of the clip group, and you can see it represented here. I'm on layer one inside the clip group, which represents this elevation. If I double click again, I'm inside, and now I can select that path. And I can come over here, and I can actually adjust the stroke. So I could say, you know what? I want that to be thicker. Let's move it up to two point. Or for illustration purposes, let me move it up to seven point so you can really see it. Now, I would never actually make it that thick, but I'm just showing you that you can go in and make these modifications. Now, if I made this modification, I said, you know what, I'm really happy that that's, that's thicker like this. If I went back to my AutoCAD file and I printed it again as a PDF, it would override these changes. So that's the key, is that once we start doing changes in Illustrator, we don't want to go back to AutoCAD and re-export. That's where we're going to get um, kind of messed up here. So I set that one at three. Let's be consistent. Let me set this one at three. So I'll double click again to get inside so I can uh, select it and we'll set this one at three. You scroll down here. I've got to do all of these to be consistent. And there it is. I'm going to set this one at three. And I'll double click to get inside this view. And there it is again at three, like that. So I managed to go in and make those modifications which is always a good idea. Okay, so now that I've done that, let's think about maybe collaging a little bit. So let me get out of this clip group. So I'll keep hitting back, back, back. And here I am looking at the floor plan. So one of the options that we previously talked about was filling in the walls using a hatch in AutoCAD. Well, maybe the hatch didn't really work or you ended up not liking it. And after the fact, you say, you know what? I do actually want that to be uh, colored a little bit. We can do that using the live paint tool, just like we did in the um, architectural diagram lecture. We can do the same thing here. So if I want to do that, I'm going to go ahead and double click to get inside this clip group. There we are. And I'm going to select the whole clip group. 
oops, let me do that one more time here. Is it not going to let me? Okay, so it's not going to let me do it that way. So we're going to have to break apart the clipping group. So what I'll do is I'll select it. I'll go up to object. I'm going to go to clipping mask and I'm going to choose release. And that should break it apart. And now that it is, we should be able to live paint that group. So to make things clear, however, you can see how messy the layer structure gets. I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this. I'm going to copy this onto a new layer. So let me create a new layer like that. It's going to be called layer two. I'm going to go ahead and call this floor plan dash live paint. And we'll go ahead and say, okay, there we go. And I'm going to copy this. So I'll go up to edit and then copy. And then I'll choose edit paste in place. And you see that the, the color changed. And that's because my floor plan live paint layer was active. And so it actually switched. So if I were to turn off layer one, it turns off everything, but this stays active, which is the, the strategy here. So with that active, I can go ahead and I can live paint this. So let me use the live paint tool. I'm going to go to object, live paint, make. That makes the live paint group. And then I can use the live paint brush tool. And that's available if I can find it. Ah, live paint bucket right there. I can get to the live paint bucket tool by pressing K. So let's go ahead and use that live paint bucket tool. And when I, when I come in here, I can actually paint inside the walls. So let's change the color that I'm going to be painting. And let's do a gray. So let's do maybe, I'm going to do 0, 0, 0. Remember, K represents the black value. So a neutral gray at, say, 50%. Is right there we'll say okay and then i can go ahead and come in here and i can paint inside the walls and when i do that it's going to fill in all of those walls much like we would have done with the hatch tool so bear with me for a second so i'm showing you this because it's an option so instead of doing it on autocad you can end up waiting and doing it in illustrator after the fact. Okay, so I filled in those. If we click off so you can see it there, they're all, all filled right now. Like that. Oops, it looks like I missed a couple. So we could go back to the live paint and we can fill in that right there. And maybe I missed this. I might have to press Control Plus a couple times. Oh, sorry, I'm in, I'm in Windows. Darn it. Control plus, not command plus, control plus. And then we can fill in any of these little pieces that I missed. Maybe there's a piece there, there, and there. So again, those are all just the options for me. The other thing that I could do is I could choose to fill in the floors. So let me come in here and let me make a much lighter K value. So let's go zero, 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 and maybe 10%. And I could fill in the floors. So I could come in here and I could fill those just a little bit so you could see what the floors look like. Maybe like that. Oh, I should do inside the closets too. Now, again, that may or may not be the strategy that you want to employ, but I'm showing you that that is definitely an option. So we can do a little bit of collage work like that. Let me press control uh, minus here. Actually, control zero so we can see the whole thing. And there we are with a little bit of collage work. Now, maybe the other strategy might be that we want to actually collage in some texture for the windows or some color for the windows. So let's look at an elevation view instead of the plan view. Let's come over to the elevation view. Again, this one is a clipping group. To release that clipping group, I'm going to go up to the edit menu or excuse me, the object menu. I'm going to go to clipping mask and I'm going to say release. So object, clipping mask, release. There we are. And now I'll go ahead and make a duplicate of this layer, or excuse me, I'm gonna make a new layer like that. This is called layer three. Actually, I should have renamed it better here. 
this would be the north elevation. So nor n elevation. Let's do n dash elevation. Dash live paint. All right, and just like I did last time, I'm going to leave that selected. I'm going to go up to edit, copy, and then edit, paste in place. Oops, and it didn't. I didn't move layer because I wasn't active. So let's move it after the fact. There it is. And just like before, if I turn off layer one, that's now on its own layer, and I can work with it. So let's use that, and let's again go to live paint. So I'm going to go to object, live paint, and then make. And then I'm going to go ahead and use my live paint bucket tool. I can get to that by pressing K on the keyboard, or I can just click on live paint bucket. And we're going to go ahead and fill this one in. I'm going to pick kind of a light blue color. And this is going to be representative of the windows for right now. So I'll go ahead and say, OK. And we're going to fill in these windows. I may have to zoom in. So let me control plus to zoom in. There we go. And I would fill in where the windows or where the glass would be. And I'm going to do all of these at once. Like that. And now I have all of those kind of windows highlighted. Let me press control minus to zoom out. Sorry, wrong keyboard again. Control minus. There we go. And we can see that the windows are kind of highlighted in that lighter blue color. Now that may be enough. That may be exactly what you want to showcase in your in your view. Maybe we do it for all the views and we just have the windows blue and that's it. Remember, a lot of times when we do this collage work, we're looking at what makes this look best. So I'm showing you different strategies or ideas, but I'm not necessarily saying that one looks better than the other or that you should do one thing versus another. So it's really about deciding what looks best and how much is too much and how much is not enough. Right, so I have all the windows highlighted in that blue color and I could leave them like that. I could also, let's go ahead and click on this again. This is still a live paint group. I'd like to break apart that live paint group. So in my properties here, well, with that live paint group selected, I'm gonna choose expand. And that again, breaks apart the live paint group. And what that would allow me to do is to actually select one of these individual blue squares. I could then select all of them by going up to the select menu and choosing select and then same fill color. It's going to select all of those windows. And for argument's sake, let's put that on its own layer as well. So let me create a new layer. We'll call that new layer windows. And let's move the objects onto that layer. And I'm going to do that by clicking this little square and moving it from the layer below to the layer above. So now they're on the windows layer. So if I were to turn everything else off, I'd end up with just those windows. Now, what if I, instead of wanting these all to be just kind of a light blue, what if I wanted to put a picture of a sky behind those windows to represent kind of a reflection of the sky? Well, first thing I would need is a picture of the sky. So let's go online and let's do a search for a sky image. So we can do Google image search. And then let's uh, cloudy, cloudy sky. And ideally, remember, I'm going to look under tools. I'm going to choose a size of large. And I'm also going to choose usage rights, Creative Commons licenses. Right? And then I just need to pick uh, an image. So let's say, uh, oh, I don't know. It's going to make me log in free download. Let's see. Let's do the large size. Let's go ahead and download it. And of course, that's what I was saying. Well, let's see if we can download the lower resolution file. Got to love these things, right?
All right, let's try that. Okay, so I have a, a, a slightly less quality version of it. But now that I have that, let's go back into Illustrator. And we need to bring that object in. So a couple things. When I start to do this, this is actually one of the most complicated things to try to do in uh, Illustrator. So the, the order of the steps really, really matters. And um, I'm showing you this. It used to actually, if I went back in time, this was probably the most important thing that I taught in 2007, 8, 9 ish. I really emphasize this. Today, it's much less important. Um, it, the styles have kind of changed and people don't do this as often, but uh, it's worth at least showing you. Um, if it doesn't really work for you, I'm not overly worried about it, but it's called um, a clipping mask with a compound path. So if we look specifically at this layer, we have a group and we have all these individual paths that are on it. First thing we need to do is actually make all of these one path. So if I were to select the first one, and then go up to select same fill color. That selects all of them. And then if I go up to my object menu and I go to compound path make, it's gonna join all of those together into one compound path. And that's really what I'm after. I could choose to fill them back in again, just so you could see them, it made them transparent when I did it. And now that they're a compound path, I can also place in that image file. So I'm going to go to file and then place. And that was in my uh, downloads, I think, right? There it is. And we're going to go ahead and place it directly in. Sometimes showing the import options is helpful because I want to make sure that it gets fully embedded here, but I think I did because I unchecked it. Okay, so now on the layer, I have the image and I have the compound path. I need to make the image big enough so that it completely covers what we're trying to cover. So let's go ahead and change that. If I want it to stay in proportion, I can hold down shift as I make this change. All right, and so, now, if I switch on my layer, if I make the compound path above the image file, we can actually see the windows in relation to this. And in this specific order where I have a layer, I have a compound path and it's top on top of the image. It has to be exactly like that. So just those elements. I can select the main layer itself, go up to the little flyout menu and say, make clipping mask. And it will actually cut out the image for just the clouds. And so now with that showing, if I went back and I turned on, say my floor plan, oh, sorry, if I turned on my layer one, which is all the drawings, you can see that the clouds are now showing where the windows would be. And in an ideal world, really, these windows should be below the clouds in the layer. So we see all the lines like that. Now, maybe these clouds are a little bit strong. Remember, we can adjust the properties of all these. So let's um, select the image, which it currently is selected. Let's go to properties. And then we can adjust the opacity here. So I'm gonna make the opacity down at maybe 50%. And that's gonna lighten those up a lot more because we don't want the windows to dominate what it is that we're seeing. All right, so let me do it again. on these windows, just so you can see the process one more time. So I select it. And remember, this is my, it's called a clipping mask right there, or a clip group. I'm going to go up to object, clipping mask, release. That lets me select it. I'm gonna go over to my layers. I'm gonna create a new layer. Let's close that windows layer down, Let's create a new layer. This is going to be my uh, what is this? South elevation live paint. There we go. We'll say okay. And I'm going to go ahead and copy it, edit, and then copy, and then edit, and then paste in place. And we want to make sure that that ends up on the south elevation live layer, live paint layer. There it is. We can turn off the other layers. There it is. 
And now we can go ahead and do the live paint. So I'm going to go to object, live paint, make. Then I'll use my live paint tool. That's also, I can get to that by pressing K. And I want to fill in, oops, that was not right, sorry. I'm going to fill in these shapes with blue. So let's get that blue, come on. There we go. And let's go ahead and fill in all of those windows. And so while I'm filling these in, you can see how if I go to all this effort on this PDF file, I wouldn't want to go back to AutoCAD and reprint it and lose what it is that I've worked on. So you really need to be basically done with the AutoCAD portion before you do collage work in Illustrator. All right, so once again, I've selected all of those windows. Now that I'm done, I'm gonna go over to properties and I'm gonna click on this expand button. And again, that expands the live paint group. I'll use the white arrow, the direct select tool to select one of the windows. There it is. And I'll go up to object, or excuse me, select same fill color. There it is, that's selected. And then I'm gonna move that onto its own layer. So we'll call, we'll make another layer. Maybe this is Windows 2. And I'll say, okay. And I'm gonna move these onto that Windows 2 layer. So I'll drag this little box up onto Windows 2. We're gonna turn off the South Elevation Live Paint layer so that we're left with just the windows. And if we look at it, remember that's inside it's inside of a group, but it has all of these paths. So we need to join all of those paths together. And we'll do that by going to object, compound path, make, and all of those become one compound path. If we wanted to see them just so that we know where the fill color was, they would look like that. Let's bring those clouds in again. I'll go to file and then place. There's those clouds. And we'll drop those in. I need to make it a little bit bigger. So I'll use the black arrow, the regular selection tool to make this bigger. Remember if I hold down shift, I'll maintain proportions. And just like we talked about before, it has to be in the exact order. The compound path has to be above the image file. And we have windows two, compound path and image. When it's set up like that, we can select windows two and choose make clipping mask and it will then cut out just the windows like this. Uh, as we did before, we want to adjust the opacity of the background. We'll say to maybe 50%. Oops. Like that. And then we'll go back to our layers and we'll move Windows 2 once again below everything else on the layer step. There it is. You guys hold on for one second. Okay, I'm sorry about that. So side story, um, my youngest daughter, who's three, uh, managed to come down with COVID. And so she's in the room with me. Uh, and she just bit her tongue. So I had to go take care of that. So I apologize, uh, complications in all of this. So anyway, uh, back to it. Um, we have our windows that are on our layer here. And again, they're behind. Let's turn on the windows 
layer here so we can see it there. And they're kind of matching. So if I press control zero, let me make sure I get control zero. Oh, there we go. Control zero one more time. There we go. Uh, we can see that the windows are kind of highlighted. That may or may not be a look that you're going for, but again, I'm showing you that as a strategy. I have up here my floor plan, which has kind of my basic texture on it. We could also choose to texture, say, uh, a wall. So if I was using this elevation view here, we can do the same process. I'm going to go to um, object, clipping mask, release. There are my lines. We're going to copy that onto a new layer. And I don't remember whether this is an east or a west elevation. This would be the uh, east elevation. And we'll go ahead and say OK there. And I'm going to copy it. So I'm going to go to Edit, and then Copy, and then Edit, Paste in Place. Remember, I'm using that Paste in Place so that these show up in the exact same location. So let's make sure that ends up on the east elevation. We could turn everything else off. There it is. Now I can go to Live Paint. Let me go to Object, Live Paint, Make. It's going to make a Live Paint group. Then I can use the Live Paint Bucket tool right here. And I could fill this in. So maybe I wanted to fill it in with something that kind of looked like concrete. And I could fill that in like that. I could also do this as a collage. So if I had a piece of concrete texture that I wanted there, I could do the same process. So again, I'm repeating myself just so you can see the, the process here. Let me go to expand. I'll use my direct select, the white arrow, to select that gray. We'll put it on its own layer. Let's call it concrete. And we'll move it onto the concrete layer. Let's move that below all the rest of the objects. And then I can do, this one doesn't need a uh, compound path because it's just one image. All I would need is an image of concrete. So let's go to concrete texture. Now, obviously, the scale of this is going to be off a little bit, but let's say that I like that. Let's download it. And there it is. Now we come back here, we go to File and then Place. And we'd use our concrete texture. Much, much bigger this time. Let me use my. Um, black arrow, my regular selection tool to make this smaller. And again, I'm holding down the shift key as a way of maintaining proportions. I will right, we'll put it right about like that. Now, if we look at the concrete layer, remember, we need this. Oh, looks like it still is a group. And it should still it should still be okay. Let's make sure that this is above, like that. Then we'll select the concrete layer, and we'll choose to make clipping mask, and it'll cut that with its concrete texture. And so that may or may not be a different strategy. I'm showing you these all as options. So let's go ahead and turn back on my windows. Let's turn back on layer one so you can see the drawing. And so they're just different ways of showing the elevation. So at this point, we have this fairly well uh, organized. We've done some collage work. Uh, it's showing how we want it to show. Uh, we could take these a little bit further. We could add the concrete texture down here on the building. Uh, we could add a wood texture here. Again, it's all about deciding how much is enough or how much is too much, and then going from there. Sometimes the most beautiful drawings are the ones that don't have anything on them at all, right? They don't have any of the color textures to them. So don't be afraid of saying, you know what, I'd rather have my line weights show than have all this extra collage work. Again, it's options, it's scales, it's how much do you want to show, how much do you not want to show based on your own particular style. Now the next piece of this though that we need is we need to install some labels. We need to put a little bit of text on this so that it makes sense. If this were a drawing that you were going to print out and give to somebody, 
it would probably need a title block around it. If it's a drawing that you're hanging up on the wall as part of a presentation, you probably don't need the title block. So that's something that ends up being optional. I do, if we, uh, if we jump over here into our exercise for today, I have a few downloads for you. I have a zip file that has a sample title block. It has a bar scale. It has some annotation notes, et cetera. You can download all of those pieces. So let's see. Let me right click on it and say save link as. Let's put it in. I'm going to go ahead and put it in my folder for today here. And let's see here. All right. That was not the correct one. Oh, yeah, it was. And let's go ahead and save it. Let's keep it. And let's go ahead and show it because we're going to need to decompress it. I'll right click on it and I'll say extract all. Now, just because I give you these doesn't mean that these are the ones that you want to. Uh, none of them work. That's so helpful. All right, well, they're, they're here. So I have notes, I have, wait, why don't I have the, I love it when stuff doesn't work the way you want it to, right? Hold on a second, try that one more time. Path too long. That's a new one. All right, well, let me try moving it into its uh, into like the downloads folder and seeing if I can extract it there. I've never encountered a path too long error. Oh, okay, works fine. <laughs> yeah, live and learn. Okay, let me copy this. And let me get it into our folder for today. There it is. Right click and say paste. All right. And in this, we have, uh, we have drawing titles, we have drawing notes, we have title blocks. And so any one of these you could use. So the title box, 24 by 36. Let's go ahead and double click that to open it. And just so you can see what it looks like. Okay, so it's asking for a particular font. We'll come back to the fine fonts in just a second, but you can see what this is, is it's kind of a title block. It's kind of casual in style. Let me press control zero so you can see it a little bit better. And then it lets us put a drawing title and client name and sheet number on it or whatever. It's kind of basic, okay? Some of the other files that we might have, let's jump back here, right? I have a drawing note. Right? It's just a little squiggly line with some text. Now, of course, you could do this yourself, uh, but these are all just designed to help you out. They are all also using a font that I've found and, and like and have used frequently called Frank the Architect. And so if we jump back into our, our um, work here, I have a link right here to Frank the Architect. Let's open it in a new tab just so you can see it here. This was a font that was designed to look uh, like an architect's handwritten um, lettering. Come on. I love it when stuff doesn't work. No, maybe not. Uh, anyway, uh, you can actually buy a version. I think it's like 20 bucks, but they have a free version that just doesn't have the bold and italic uh, versions. That's the one that I used for these, um, these projects. There it is. We can kind of see it there. So it looks like architectural font. You can go ahead and download that font. Uh, I already have it on my on my flash drive, but you can download it. Let's see where download right here. Sometimes you got to love. Ah, there it is. See downloaded right there. 
And if you were to extract it, let's go ahead and show it in its folder. Right, let's let's extract it. And I actually chose to save this on my flash drive, or I, I keep it on my flash drive so I can use it. There it is. We can actually just double click the font and you can say install. And it will install that font for us. Now it may make you, uh, oh, looks, it fixed the, the missing font. We can go ahead and close that. I think the next time it opens, yep, there it is in that font. Same thing would happen in the, the, the title block here. And so all you would do is you can go in and double click on those. So all that being said, we can choose to bring in any of those notes into this file. So if I go to file and then place, all right, let's go into my uh, folder for today. If I can pick the right one here, there we go. Let's go into the title blocks. And these are Illustrator, and I can use any one of these. So let's say I wanted the, the title block. I could choose it and say place. And we can say, you know what? Let's do the uh, media. That's the whole page. We'll say, okay. And let's choose that upper corner right there. And why hasn't it shown up? Oh, because it's on the clipping mask layer. Whoops. We go to new layer. I should have done this first. See, even I run into problems. So a layer called title block. There we go. Let's move the object onto the title block layer. And let's move that all the way on top of everything else. Um, and that ended up blocking it. Let me change. Let's move this back down. Actually, I think we can, now that it's on its own layer, it can be at the very back. Yep, there it is. And then I could come in and I could edit the drawing title. So we could say, let's double click on it. If you keep double clicking, you'll keep going inside. And we could say, this is uh, Yosemite Valley Cabin. Oops. Generally, all of the architects uh, work in all capitals. So you will probably want to uh, have caps lock on. And then I can do client name and, and, and whatever. So that's giving myself kind of a background. Let's back our way out of this. And that's giving me that title block. Could you instead draw a title block? Absolutely, right? I could come over here and let's make a new layer for title block two. And I could say, you know what, I want, I'm just gonna click and that's gonna let me, oops. I thought it would. Uh, let's do a width of 24.5 inches by, uh, a high, oh, sorry, width would be 35.5 inches by 24.23.5 inches. And we could say, you know, I just want a black border. We could then move it so that it's centered. Sometimes you need to move it off so you can figure out where the center is. There we go. And then you could add some of your own text or little blocks. So again, none of this has to be done you know, with one of the presets that I'm using, I'm just showing you these strategies, okay? You may need to put a bar scale in. So let's go to file and then place. We can use one of my existing bar scales. So we know that this is in quarter inch equals a foot. So I'm gonna do the quarter inch scale. Go ahead and say place. Let's say, okay. And that will then bring in this little bar scale for us. And so let's press control plus. And you can see there's that little graphic bar scale that's telling us what the size would be. And again, you could draw this out yourself. You could create it uh, on your own, but it's also just a way of being able to easily drop it into a particular scene. It's obviously it's casual in its style, uh, but that might be something that you're after. Let's bring in one of the other ones. Let's go to file and then place. And let's use the drawing title. 
go ahead and say okay. I'm going to drop this one here, right? So title goes here, subtext goes here. Again, this is another option for you. Let me press wrong, control minus, right? And we can put our title. And I can move this over here. And I could change this to be north elevation. Now, one of the other keys, hold on. So anyway, thanks for your patience. Okay, so I've changed that to be north elevation and I could actually come in here and let's back up here. What? Hold on, I lost my connection. Oh. All right, I think I'm back. I don't know, my internet died on me. Uh, let's go ahead and back this one up. And then I could go in and I could change and you could actually just change this to have the scale in it. So I could write in quarter inch equals one foot. Did that freeze again on me? Again on me. Ah. It's just moving slow. Anyway, so they're just other options. The key here is that you want your text to maintain small. I think one of the biggest problems that I see people do is they go ahead and they write in their, their text. Let's say that this is the West Elevation. I can't type here. Okay, I take their text and they say, oh, that looks way too small. So let me take that text and make it big. So we'll go into properties and they say, oh, I need this to be much larger. Oh, come on. There we go. And they say, oh, this needs to be, you know, 36 points so I can see it. And so they have these labels on their drawings. See, even, even, even for me, it's not working. Oh, I'm sorry. All right, let me try this one more time. Let me paste it here. I can try to illustrate my point. All right, so people have a tendency to make their fonts really large and they make their labels. However, when this ends up being printed out on a wall, if I press control zero, that text stands out way too much. So limits on font size. And this is something that will be part of your assignment. When you go to turn this in and grade it, uh, I will be looking for this specifically. I would make your title text no larger than say 18 point. Ideally, it's like 12 point because it's something that's only relevant when you get up close to the drawing. 
So what we do want is we want all the views to be labeled. So if this is the west elevation, let's change that uh, type here. Maybe 14 point. And we'll move that yeah, nice and close there. There's nothing wrong with that. You can certainly, if you don't like the Frank the Architect font, there's no reason you can't just use a basic font like this. All right, so this right here is the south elevation. South elevation. Let's go ahead and paste it again. That one up. This is the east elevation. And one more. And this is the north elevation. Um, you can, of course, label the plan. Uh, I find the plan to be much less critical on label because it's kind of obvious that this is the plan. But the elevation views, you definitely want those to be labeled. So once all of this is done and you feel good, we're going to go ahead and save it. So I'll go to File and then Save. It still saves as a PDF because that's what we opened originally. And Illustrator will let us save the PDF file, hopefully. And there we are. So once this is done, we want to export it as a JPEG. So I'll go to File and then Export. And we're going to export as. And we're going to choose uh, a JPEG. So right here, we'll come down here and choose JPEG. There it is. We'll go ahead and export it. And this is what you'll end up turning in. So let's bump up the size to maximum. And let's change the resolution to 300. We'll go ahead and say OK, and it'll write a JPEG for us. You can, of course, turn in the PDF as well, but I'd encourage you to turn in the, uh, the JPEG. From here, if we were in person, I'd have you actually go to the plotter and print this out, because that's one of the processes so that you could hang it up on the wall or whatever as a final piece of work. Um, because we're remote, you don't have that job. You don't have to go print it out. But I do want these to, to look really nice and clean. So before I let you go, I know I have two more minutes or so. I want to remind you that this piece also belongs in your portfolio. So don't forget about that portfolio. It should always be kind of chewing along in the back of your mind. We'll come back and revisit it soon. But when it comes to these pieces, don't be afraid to reorganize them for your portfolio. Maybe you, you change so that it's not just the whole 24 by 36. Maybe you're showing a plan and two of the elevations. You don't have to show all of it, but they need to find their way into the portfolio as well. So once you have them the way that you like them, save them as a PDF, and then you can bring that PDF directly into um, InDesign as part of your portfolio. Okay. So uh, with that being said, I'm going to invite any questions that you guys may have, uh, and then I'll go ahead and let you go. We will have check-ins this week, uh, which, is, which is just like normal. So I'll see all of you in check-ins. If you end up having questions or want to talk about anything specifically, uh, I'm happy to talk about that. But before I let you go, does anybody have any questions about where we are globally in the class that's relevant for everybody? No? All right, perfect. I'll let you all go, and I'll see you in your uh, check-ins this week.